All right, let's go to Anna in Baltimore. What's up, Anna? Hi. How are we doing? Good, good. Um, so I'm calling because, uh, well, first of all, thank you for taking my call. Of course, <laughs> um, thank you. <laughs> hey, yeah. how, how's your new year going? You doing well? It is. Yeah, we got a little bit of sickness in our house, but I think anyone that with kids can empathize with that. Yes. <laughs> we're, we're doing okay. They are walking Petri dishes. Really? Seriously, yes. <laughs> Um, well, my question was, um, I get, I am struggling, um, about a month and a half ago, my spouse was dishonest with me about something. Um, I'm just kind of having a hard time of like, where do I land? Like, as far as how do I move forward from it? Um, cause I, I just really didn't see it coming. And so. What were they dishonest uh, about? So, um, they're using cannabis products, which I guess is it's like a separate issue in itself. Um, I like, just, like, like be more specific, smoking weed, oh, sure, sure, taking sure. CBD. Like yeah. What? Yeah. Vaping. Um, and so he has, has, has historically had a back injury and had used it for pain. Mm -hmm. Um, but then before the back injury also used it, um, a lot in his young adult life for like partying and stuff like that. And so, um, yeah. And so part of us, like we've only been married for like three years. Um, and a part of that was, an agreement that that wasn't going to be a part of like our lifestyle. And that, it didn't seem like a hard thing for him. We sacrificed it. Like it didn't seem like a hard thing. It wasn't a, a big issue. Um, and so I, I thought we were under the understanding that that was kind of where we were at still. Cause there was no conversation. You were, um, and you, you were, I was, no, no, y'all yeah, were like, yeah, we both, God, I'm sorry. You were under y'all both agreed that he wasn't going to smoke anymore. Right. Yeah. 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 So like um, part, part of <laughs> when we're faced with, um, like just, I, I say gross, not like blood and guts, but just like blatant dishonesty. I often, <laughs> I go to the mirror and be like, oh, I must not have been super clear. Like I blame myself. And so right. I'm, I'm trying to affirm you here. Y'all had the conversation okay. and this was part of what y'all agreed on. Is that, is that right? Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Cause it's, yeah, it's the question if there was a misunderstanding or, um, no, no, no. So yeah. he, here's, here's what I think you're doing. I think you are trying to squeeze and minimize how bad you feel because if you don't, you're forced to deal with the reality that your husband looked you in the eye and lied to you for a long time. Right. And right. I don't, and I don't so, care about the weed and all that. That's, I mean, that's a whole yeah. other conversation. Y'all made an agreement on who y'all were going to be and the behaviors, the actions y'all were going to take to backfill your identity. And not only did he not, hold up his end of the agreement, but he lied to you about it. Right. Right. And, and so can I say one more thing? Yeah, absolutely. You knew. And you didn't want to know, like you knew he was different or you knew he was a little <laughs> bit distant and you didn't want to come clean either. And so you are also pissed at yourself. Fair. Yeah, that's a fair. That's fair. Okay. Um, so now we got yeah. a big mess. Right. What do you do now? That's my question. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm calling you idiot. Um, okay. Yeah. So let's, let's, he's not here and we can't do anything about his behavior. Only he can. Right. His actions. So let me ask you a couple of questions. One, are you a person that is safe to be honest with? I thought so. <laughs> it's not a, like a, a, I'm not trying to trick you. I'm just asking. Right. Yeah. No, I am. I have, I, I have worked in an industry that had, um, really close interactions with people with substance abuse. Okay. And so I think I'm a little more sensitive, um, to it. And so I just, I just, I think it's, I've seen it really S destroy so many families. Stop alive, but... saying there's something wrong with you. Oh, Okay. <laughs> There's not, you're not extra sensitive to it. Whatever, your husband flat out lied to your face. Yeah. Yeah. So I have a problem with it. Um, you have a problem with his dishonesty? Like, oh, huge. Yeah. Yes, you should. You should. Absolutely. You should. And you have a problem with peacekeeping. And to have a successful relationship, occasionally you have to raise a ruckus, not like an idiot and not like some kind of alpha <laughs> moron, but you have to, you have to raise the temperature of the room. You okay. have to turn all the lights on and say, hey, what's going on here? You lied to my face. And it's very fair to ask, what else are you not being honest about? 
So if that's the case, yeah, and I, I completely agree with that. So that that was a part of the conversation um, when he finally was honest with me. Um, was was there anything else you're lying about? And the answer is no. Like, do you just trust? That? <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I think the path back to trust is different for everybody. Okay. Okay. So some people, um, some people like want to check in. You, I want to, I want to, you have to kiss me every night so I can, I can smell your breath. Um, every night I'm going to look you in the eye and say, did you smoke today? Uh, I want to see your text messages and read your, like, that's the only way I'm going to feel safe. Or we have a shared bank account and I'm going to review the, the, like, like everybody's, everybody's path back to trust is different. Okay. And what I'm going to tell you is, um, a, you can get out of control with that, right? Where you become right. a possessive lunatic and <laughs> that's hard to get to. You have a, you, I, I believe you, oh no, I, I know. You are entitled to, hey, here's what I feel right now. I feel you're not being honest. And something tells me that you're calling me because you think he's not being honest about something else. Um, yeah, I can't really, there's one thing. Yeah, like, I guess, um, yeah, like online gambling for sports just became legal in the state of Maryland. And mm -hmm. so, He's been really um, engaged in that, and so I, I he's the one who oversees. That. I mean, I have access to everything, obviously, mm -hmm. but as far as like finances and stuff like that, he's kind of the head of that. Um, and so I sometimes get a little. And now, because of this, I'm like, are like, are we okay with that? Like, is it just a recreational thing? Like, are the numbers? Here's, accurate, what, here's what you accurate? have. Your body <laughs> yeah. is telling you you're not safe. And part of the reason you're not safe is because you don't know. Because you're not facing reality. You're not owning reality. Okay. How much money do I have in my account? Like, here's how much was deposited from your check. Here's how much deposited was from my check. Where did every one of those dollars go this month? How much do you owe to a gambling website A? I mean, it's like you don't know where it's going. So, for instance, yeah. if I went to Vegas, I would tell my wife, hey, I'm taking this much money to be stupid with. And she would say, well, you're an idiot. And, but it's part of, uh, it's, it would be a, an agreed upon amount that was, that we've already sure. budgeted for that'd be right. So it's different than I'm just sitting in my, in the couch while you're asleep and I'm gambling on this game and I'm trying to pick it back on this game. Right. I, j I just gave a interview with, um, USA Today yesterday on what is just people are, are getting dragged underwater with this online gambling. It's madness. Madness, madness. Okay. Um, and so something in your gut tells you something's not right. And for some reason, over the course of your life, you've been taught to shut up inner Anna so that everybody else can go about their day peacefully. Fair? Fair. Fair. Okay. So let me say this. Secrets destroy marriage. Okay. They destroy relationships. They destroy people. That's number one. Number two, I think it's fair to sit down and be point blank, very, very clear with yourself. Here's what I'm worried about. Here's what I know. Here's what I think is actually going on. Write those things down because those hard conversations become very emotional. They, our bodies yeah. take over for us, right? And then we start crying and then we, or we see our partner like kind of get a little bit there. We, we read facial cues and then we're like, no, no, no. I mean, I mean, not that I know you're not, but we start hedging our bets, right? Mm -hmm. Write down what you are actually concerned about, what you're worried about, the things you need to know to begin to reestablish trust. I need to know how much money we have. I need to know how, where it goes. We're going to make a budget together. I want you to hang on the line. I'm going to send you um, financial peace university, the whole class. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. I work here at Ramsey solutions. Dave Ramsey's my boss. And mm -hmm. so the, I, I'm going to give you the tools to say, here's what we're going to do as a couple. This is going to be a path back to reestablishing trust together. We're going to get on the same page. We're going to get the same values together. We're going to share money. We're going to not, you're not going to do all the money by yourself. We're going to do it together every month. We're going to have a plan. Now we're going to reestablish trust. Here's what you have to know though. He might tell you to go to hell. 
Okay. Yeah. Okay. You know that, right? I, I would highly doubt it, but I guess that is an option for anyone. Okay. Yeah. Good. That makes my heart feel good. I, I, I heard in your voice. I thought you were going to say that you were worried about that. If you don't think so, no. great, great. <laughs> no. That's awesome. Okay. So I'm going to send you that, and I want you to read out to him your letter. Okay. Okay. This is what I need. Like you violated our trust. Like, yes, we agreed you weren't going to smoke weed and all that kind of stuff. Well, that's a whole other conversation. The bigger deal is you messed up and then you hid it from me. And now I'm wondering what about our money? I'm wondering about your online gambling. I'm wondering about that person at work that why you're always texting somebody when you, I'm worried about all kinds of things and you open the door. And so here's our path back together. Here's what trust looks like for us. And again, this isn't rage. This isn't anger. This is you listening to your body. You're not safe. And your body's literally sounding the anxiety alarms. And for those of y'all listening, this is one of those core moments of building a non-anxious life. I'm going to own reality. And reality is I don't know how much money we have in our account. I don't know who's spending what on how or when and not knowing about something as important as your finances. Are we going to have a house payment? Are we going to have rent? Can I trust the person I'm sharing a bed with? Your body's going to sound the anxiety alarms. You're going to be anxious. You're going to be fried out. You're going to be nervous. Or your body's just going to shut the whole thing down. You're going to depress. Your body's going to try to take care of you when it recognizes danger. And Anna, trust your guts for the first time. Trust your guts. I think you're right on this one. Hang on the line here, and Jenna's going to take care of you, get you uh, uh, signed up for Financial Peace University, and give you all a path out of this thing together. 